Blended learning and technology enhanced learning. What are they and why bother? The two terms are sometimes confused. They are similar. Technology enhanced learning and blended learning. Technology enhanced learning uses technology to reinforce to do better what you're already doing. Uh, you're doing role playing, maybe using uh, computer support, you can make that role playing better. Uh, with blended learning, you're shifting what you're doing. Uh, where you used to lecture, prepare the students for some sort of active learning exercise, then proceed to the act of learning all within the in classroom. With blended learning, the preparation that uh, precedes the act of learning would be done online, for example. So they're spending less time in the classroom face to face with you. Or you may be doing something where you used to meet face to face and then they would go off on their own on practicums or job placements where now you might have them out on job placements and meet once in a while synchronously. Uh, blended learning changes the dynamics of the way you teach. Some examples of technology enhanced learning is using mannequins uh, like they do in the health sciences using video conferencing to re reach multiple classrooms. That's technology enhanced. Podcasting lectures rather than having face-to-face -face lectures. Um, having the students do their projects online as opposed to in the classroom are examples of blended learning. Now, here are some assumptions about blended learning. It is an integration of face-to-face -face with online. It doesn't replace face-to-face -face in the sense that that portion of the course is still there. It's just delivered online instead of face-to-face. -face. You take what is best about online combine it with what's best about face-to-face, -face, and hopefully come up with something that's better. It requires a rethinking of how you design a course, and it has ramifications in room design, whether or not you're going to invest in lecture halls, or whether or not you're going to have nothing but labs because all lectures take place elsewhere. Um, it requires a real shift in your thinking, not just instructionally, but administratively as well. And there's a whole sort of issues around what is instructional contact time. Because by going to blended learning, it redefines that. You're, you may not be with the students face to face as much, but you actually may have to do a bit more work because a lot of the stuff that you would deliver in lecture format now has to be delivered online, such as what I'm doing right now. I can't just talk about it, write it on the chalkboard as I do it. I had to type it up and everything. And taking traditional face-to-face -face and replacing some of it with more meaningful or more useful or more practical uh, online or computer-based learning uh, experiences. Now, it's highly an oversimplified definition, but that's basically what you're trying to do. It may be as simple as having your lectures uh, podcasted 
so ESL students can listen to them over and over again so that they can get the English, they can learn the language, they can understand what you're doing so that if your clientele, the population you're drawing your students from, happens to be working people, and therefore they can listen to the podcast while they can commute, they can listen to podcasts while they take care of the kids. It becomes more meaningful. And sometimes it's not a huge shift. It simply becomes more meaningful because more students can access it because of greater flexibility. When you think about changing what you're doing, you need to think of what I call the Iron Triangle. Do your changes increase access. Can more students have access? How about the quality? Does the inequality improve? Or does the cost, either cost of delivery, cost to the students, uh, does that improve? And your goal is to reduce costs or keep costs down as far as possible, while at the same time maintaining or improving quality while maintaining or improving access. Uh, access can be defined as distance, safety, space, time, distance, meaning people who normally couldn't get to the class now can get to the class. Um, I used to teach traditional university classes where driving was an issue, safety was an issue because of bad weather. And so if they only had to come once a week because part of the class was blended, it uh, has an advantage. If you're doing things online, there you don't need a lecture hall on the other hand, the institution needs to provide space for students who may not have the technology at hand. And it can save time, or it can allow time to extend. I mentioned ESL students in particular. People with learning disabilities can have more time to do their work. Uh, quality, you can have more realistic activities, you can follow current practices, better problem solving, more practice. There's lots of things that technology can do that will improve the quality. And course uh, costs would be cost per student, overhead costs such as less building space or being able to focus your building space on labs rather than lectures. Now, there's some important points to keep in mind. Change should only, only be driven by program goals and course objectives. Don't do it because it's the cool thing to do. God forbid if you're put into a position where somebody from on high, say the provincial government, mandates that you're going to do X percent of your courses blended or online. Um, I've seen it happen, uh, and it's not pretty. Implementing technology into the classroom is often easier than blended learning because with blended learning, there's this paradigm shift, you know, you're changing the whole way that you're used to doing things. Um, blended learning would be using document cameras to display documents rather than photocopying them onto sheets and using overheads. Uh, less of a shift. Technological change is easier than psychological change. I have been doing these type of presentations, narrated PowerPoints, for 
gee, at least 10 years now. And I still feel dumb talking to the computer, which is what I'm doing right at this moment. So there's this psychological change, which, you know, hopefully you younger folks out there won't have as big of a problem with. And it's important to remember that if you do things a little bit at a time, make a small change, make a small change, make a small change, um, it's a lot easier. If you're thinking of doing blended learning, well, you could start by simply recording lectures one semester, and then maybe the next semester have those lectures online and cut your face-to-face -face time down a bit, provide a bit support supporting materials documents to go along with the podcasts, the, the recorded lectures, and then all of a sudden you're in blended, but you don't have to sit down there and do blend it all at once. And uh, by doing it in small steps, if it blows up in your face, it's a minor poof instead of a big bang. For more information, you can contact me. Or you can contact uh, Kurt and Wayne at Learning Technologies. Uh, we'd all be glad to help you.